Hello and welcome back to Monetized History. My name is Daniel and today we're talking about Imperial Germany and the 1910 100 marks banknote, the Flattenhunderter. The German Empire was founded in early 1871 in the aftermath of the Franco-Prussian War. Most of the diverse and numerous German kingdoms, duchies, and principalities were amalgamated with the Kingdom of Prussia to form a new empire. By the turn of the 20th century, this new empire had become one of the largest economies in the world. This sense of growth, strength, and victory takes the form of the oak and laurel motifs on both sides of the note. Branches of oak and laurel underpin the crown jewels on the obverse of the note, and on the reverse, Germania is crowned with victory laurels while she, along with oak trees, long a symbol of Germany, defends the shores. But even by 1908, when the Fleet Hundred was first printed, the long-term unity of Germany was not a foregone conclusion. The state, perhaps insecure in its authority, often backs the denomination with state symbols like the crown jewels and Reichsadlers. Or in the case of the watermark, the ultimate symbol of German authority, Kaiser Wilhelm I, the man who unified the empire. Perhaps because Germany lacked a history as a unified nation, the reverse of the note is focused on looking forward. In the shade of twin oaks rampant with growth is a collage of implements representing the economic sectors that had made Germany first among the nations of Europe. An anvil and cog for industry and engineering, a caduceus and parcel for commerce and trade, and a plow for agriculture. Germania is wearing coronation robes, indicating that her rule has only just begun. She is relaxed but armed and armored, her sword partially unsheathed. In the waters behind her is a flotilla of warships, a product of the naval arms race then underway between the United Kingdom and Germany. These are unambiguous representations not only of Germany's willingness to defend its perceived interests, but also of Germany's, and more specifically Kaiser Wilhelm II's, bellicose attitude towards foreign relations. This dichotomy of prosperity and conflict permeated German society at the time. Massive industrial growth drew millions to the cities, fomenting socialist ideals at odds with the new and established aristocracy. At the same time, the landed nobility was still very dependent on agriculture. An echo of the empire's efforts to reconcile these stakeholders is manifested in the portraits of Mercury and Ceres, the Roman deities of commerce and agriculture. These changes were taking place at the tail end of revolutions in industry and agriculture. Advances in fertilization, crop rotation, and animal husbandry meant that more food was available to support a larger population. Advances in industry meant that fewer people were needed to sustain these increases in agriculture, driving more people to the cities and factories, fueling industrial output even more. This clash of the old world and the new is further manifested in the juxtaposition of the traditional German black letter font and the, at the time, ultra-modern Art Nouveau design elements, known in Germany as Jugendstil. The former serves to anchor the authority of the state in history and tradition, and the latter is a recognition of the new world emerging at the dawn of the 20th century and Germany's intention to lead it. Finally, it's worth noting that in 1910, 100 marks was a significant amount of money, more than 10% of the average annual wage. This wasn't a note for the common man. Its iconography and symbolism were messages for the well-to-do. The martial themes are assurances to the aristocracy to defend the prosperity of the last quarter century. The classical elements are a recognition of the traditions upon which that prosperity was built. And the cutting-edge design elements are a promise to continue looking towards the future. The Fleet Hundred perfectly captures the zeitgeist of the twilight of the German Empire. Unlike most modern notes, it provides a window into that time and place, and helps us better understand the people and events that shaped it. And now for the trivia. Are you ready? Who was the German Chancellor who guided the growth of Germany in the late 19th century, leading to the prosperity it enjoyed in the early 20th century? If you think you know, let me know in the comments and I'll reveal the answer tomorrow. That's all for today, thanks for watching. Do you have any Imperial German marks in your collection? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.